No way! Yes, Max, yes! Hey, what's going on out there, fishing fam? Ray Sharifi here with the Dirty Hookers, and today is gonna be the first video to its new series that I'm doing. If you guys haven't seen in the past, I did a little video of testing out my first ever glide bait that I made, and I announced that I'm really, really into bait making. So this is my first video ever of, of me building one of my lures and testing it out on the water and everything that goes along with it. The whole build process to the fishing it process and catching fish on it. This video, I'm making a stick bait for tuna fishing, going out on my buddy Hayden's charter tomorrow. We're gonna be fishing on the Daiwa Pacific, with the OG Pride crew, and we're gonna be targeting tuna, possible Dorado, and possible yellowtail if we find anything on kelp patties. But the main focus is gonna be tuna. So stick bait's gonna be pretty good. Always have a stick bait tied on on tuna trips. When I'm super antsy, it's way easier to just chuck and wind and not have to worry about your patience and popping that lure over and over. Don't criticize too much. This is no marling baits video or solar baits or nolan baits. This is nothing like them. Again, this is the first time I've ever even tried to film the build process of this. So if the video or the filming process isn't that great, I apologize in advance. Also the airbrush, totally, totally new to me. So I'm not an expert at that either. But again, don't criticize me too much because again this is my first time but with that being said i hope you all enjoy this video let's go ahead hop right in get to the build i drew out the initial shape with pencil so that i'm able to erase any kind of mistakes that i need and then i come back with ink and i trace over those pencil marks so that it's a nice dark outline that i can follow on the bandsaw next i cut that out and then i go ahead apply a good amount of glue on there so that it's not going to peel up lay it down on the piece of wood Make sure it's nice and flat and very well glued down. Then I'm gonna go ahead, cut it out on the bandsaw. I give myself a little bit of room on each side so that I can actually see the outlines. And from there, I'm able to sand down the excess material to my likings, as opposed to cutting directly on that line. If the blade of the bandsaw starts to dig into the wood in spots that I don't like, at least I have a little bit more material that I can go back and correct. After I had the shape cut out, went ahead and put it on the belt sander, smoothed it out to the outlines that I had drawn out. The ones I had that to my likings, I went and shaped down the corners of it, got it a little bit rounded off just to start it off. And then I clamped it down in the vise and hit it with a strip of sanding belt. The sanding belt's nice because it's flexible, it's long, it's pretty coarse, and you can get rid of a lot of material pretty quickly. And the fact that it is flexible, you're able to get some nice rounded edges to it. It really helps speed up the process. As I was hitting it with the strip of sanding belt, I started to think it'd be really cool to leave the head really, really wide. I went ahead and gave an initial first little cut so that I can see where I didn't want to sand anymore. I went back with a with the sanding strip and I went ahead and sanded all around that gill plate. Once I was happy with the overall shape that I was looking for, changed the position, put it back in the vise, and from there, I was gonna cut a center slot down the middle. Now, the reason why I wanted to do a center slot down the middle is because I wanted to do a full one-piece wire harness. So instead of having screw wires that go into the bait in multiple different places, I wanted it to be all one piece because I am using this for tuna. And if we get into those bigger bluefin, I want it to be as strong as possible so that nothing's getting ripped out and it's likely to hold up a little bit better than if the screw eyes were in there. Now, I'm onto the wire. I'm gonna start bending the wire. And from what I've learned with the wire pliers, if you want it to have kind of like, almost makes like a 45 degree turn into itself, I notice to make a full loop more than I need to. And then I take the wire and bend it back on itself. And what that does is it gives it a nice 45 degree angle so that it looks nice and flush and it looks really clean. I should have done this before cutting the wire slot because it would have been a lot more clean. And here is I have to try my best to keep that Forstner bit from sliding around in that slot and keep it as straight as possible. Usually with casting lures, I like most of the weight to be in the back. However, I do want this to be pretty nose heavy so that it has a really, really good pivot point. And from here, what I'm doing is I'm filling in all the gaps from the holes and the wire slot with UV resin. So I filled it with UV resin and then I went ahead and did a very, very thin layer rubbing in as much UV resin into the wood as I possibly could, let it soak in a little bit. And I went ahead and put it into here. So now the wood is fully sealed. All I'm gonna do now is drill out the eye sockets. And from here, it's ready to paint. 
base layer of this lure is gonna be mainly silver. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some foil tape for the initial base coat, which is gonna save me a lot of painting. It's gonna be nice and shiny, nearly chrome, and it'll be really reflective in the water. So trace it out on some foil tape, cut it out, and then apply it to both sides and take your time to rub it in. The camera, for whatever reason, cut out while I was flattening it down. But what you wanna do to get rid of all those wrinkles is just take your time with something smooth, a pencil, a pen, the shaft of a screwdriver, whatever you need that is nice and smooth and rounded off and just take your time and, and push all those wrinkles out. Starting off with titanium white for the belly. Getting a little bit of belly spray on there to cover up the seams and to cover up the belly, the holes and everything. Just a white base on the belly. What I really wanted to do was a sardine pattern, but I promised my buddy Mike that if I were to make a stick bait before this trip, give it to him and he really wanted a trophy pattern. As much as I wanted to do a sardine pattern, I knew that this bait was gonna go to him. So I went ahead and did that trophy pattern like he requested. I've applied some mesh over top of the lure, clamped it down, got it nice and tight. And now I'm gonna hit it with some black. I'm focusing mainly just on the back and doing a very, very slight coat because chovies are pretty silvery fish already and they just have black or a dark green on their back. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it just like that. Got a good scale pattern and now it's ready to go. I'll ignore that separate lure that's in there as well. That's gonna be a separate video. But now it's in the curing box and now it's time to get on the water, test it out, and hopefully put some fish on it. Throw the skip jig, dude. Oh, boils all over right there, dude. Oh, come on, Ray, Ray, you stick me. No way. Yeah, <laughs> Max. Yeah, Max. No way. Yes, Max, yes. Max, Max hooked up on my stick bait right now. That's Mike's stick bait, actually. It's oh no! <laughs> when it comes up, hold it out for me. One cast on it? Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh! Yes, dude. Hell oh, yeah, dude. Gotcha. Can you see that? Hey, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Max. Yeah. Oh my God, they're right here. Raise wood. They're f dude. They're right there. Oh yeah, I saw them right there. Oh, dude, they're. Oh my God, it's a bomber school, dude. They're everywhere. There's a lot of fish on this school. Oh my god, there's a lot of fish on this school. Oh my god, they're right here. Going out. Oh, 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 oh,
Dude, it's a nice bowl too. Oh, on the jig. Yes! Yeah! On oh, my stick, babe! Woo! On 